I've had many subscribers request details on my HVAC system, so in this video, that's what I'm going to go over. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh Channels, all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So before I go over the details of my system, I want to go over some general information about HVAC. Let's get started. I'm just going to go over some general knowledge regarding HVAC. So what does HVAC stand for? It stands for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. So this includes your duct work, your units, and everything that's part of your HVAC system. So what is a SEER rating? We always hear this term SEER when it comes to rating units. What SEER is, it's seasonal energy efficiency ratio. So there's an equation for it, but long story short, it's just how efficient the units are. The higher the number, the more efficient. A lot of more expensive brands are going to have a higher SEER rating, and those are not always better all because they're more expensive, but if we go off the SEER, the SEER just means it's more efficient. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, and what I have in my house here that I'm building is a heat pump and an electric indoor furnace. When we take a look at an inside unit when it comes to HVAC, it typically consists of an air handler, a furnace, and an evaporator coil. And I forgot my R right here, so we need to make this official and add it. And if you're not sure what an air handler is, this is the blower that's on the inside of the house that blows the air throughout the house. And if we take a look at what an outside unit consists of, it consists of a condenser coil, a compressor, and a fan. And back to the furnace part on the inside unit, this can be propane, natural gas, or electric in most cases. Those are the most common heating sources in the US, so that's just uh, something you're gonna have to decide what you want and what's available in your area. So now that we went over the general knowledge here, I'm gonna show you some details about my house that I'm building here. I know most people are probably already familiar with what a thermostat is. So this is a thermostat. This is a basic one that I use when I'm building houses. So whenever I'm done building, I will switch over to a nest or something better for long-term. But how this works is it senses the temperature and then it kicks the heat or cooling on depending on if you want the temperature to go up or down. So if we have it set on, let's say 70, and the temperature is only 66 right now, then the heat would kick on to get it up to 70. And then if we have it on cool, if we have it set to, let's say 60, and it's 66 in the room, so it'll kick on until we hit the desired temperature. And most of them have a fan control where you can just kick the fan on all the time, or like most people, you keep it on auto and it just kicks on and off with the heat and cooling. Wherever you have this set is where it's gonna be reading the temperature and adjusting accordingly. So if you place this in a closet, your house will never heat and cool properly, just for instance. And I have this set in a hallway, so that way this is more towards the central part of the house and this is gonna heat and cool roughly to what the whole house is gonna heat and cool at. So if we're 66 here, because we're more central in the house, then the rest of the house is probably close to 66. A really important component to an HVAC system is a return. So as you can see, I got a high return and a low return. This is what draws the air back down into the air handler to where it is processed to either being heated or cooled, and then it's blown back up through the ductwork. So that's something you need to frame out while you're doing your framing and always work with your HVAC technician to know the best place to place it. Typically, again, it's gonna be in the most central part of the house. In this case, I haven't installed the grills yet here for the return. So once I do, I'll be able to install my filters into the grills and replace them that way. Right now, they're just temporarily sitting into place and I have tape just holding the filters into place. All right, let me show you the ductwork. As far as the best place to put an air vent in a room, the best place is typically in front of windows and doors because those are gonna be the cold spots in the house. And if you have a vent in front of them, you won't feel the cold spots because you will clearly have a vent there blowing around the cold spots. So that's just something to keep in mind. Another great place to remember to put a vent is right where your kitchen sink's gonna be. This is gonna be under the cabinet and it's gonna blow up and then come out of the toe kick and that's gonna help heat and cool you while you're doing your dishes, loading the dishwasher, etc. And that's probably the best spot to put in the kitchen because if you put it right in the middle of the floor, you have risk of food and water getting down into that vent. So a toe kick vent is definitely 
probably the best option in the kitchen. I'm here in the gym and the gym is a concrete floor. So you might be wondering, how do we get ventilation up through the concrete floor? Well, the truth is you don't, you gotta come in from above. So the duct work is actually ran inside of the wall coming up from the crawl space, going up in the attic, then it's coming down from a vent up above in the ceiling. Let me show you. So as you can see, here's one above this window and then I have another one down here that is above that window. This is my outside unit. The brand is Air Temp, as you can see. It is a five ton unit. So if you're wondering how many ton per square foot, so typically it's about 500 square foot per ton. So this system is probably a little undersized for this house because this house is 3000 square foot, but I had it running all winter and I haven't had any problems with it. So per code in my area, just so everyone's aware, is there has to be an outlet right beside the HVAC unit on the outside so technicians have a place to work. Here is the whip that is getting the power over to the unit. And I believe this is a 14 sear unit rating. Here's the lines coming out of the house to the unit. And if we take a look here, this is the water line that comes from the condensation pump from the inside. Here is my inside unit and if you look over here, that is my condensation pump and it is powered from this outlet. So you definitely need to make sure you put an outlet beside your inside unit. So again, this is my air handler and it has my furnace in it. So the electric furnace is gonna kick on whenever the outside unit cannot keep up. So if it's below about 32 degrees, the outside units are not very efficient. So with that being said, that's when your inside unit will kick on to make up the difference. So I'm gonna show you the actual trunk and run system I got going on here. So if we take a look here, there is a long trunk that goes down the whole length of the house. And then off from the trunk is these flexible air ducts. And these ducts run over to the vent that goes up through the floor here. And here's this one that I showed you earlier. And how that works is it zip ties to a boot. So the zip tie is what seals it to the boot. And then that's all there is to the actual system is you just have this long trunk and run or trunk and branch set up. Now I'm gonna go over how much that system cost me to have installed. Me and my father used to install our own duct work and then paid a company to come set the units because you gotta be licensed to handle the uh, Freon. Well, it ain't Freon now, I'm not sure what it is, but you have to be licensed to manage that stuff and we don't have that. So what we ended up doing was just doing the duct work and then they'd do it and save us a couple thousand bucks. But we found out over time, we found the right company to work with and it's actually much better just to have them do the whole thing for no more than it costs. So if you're wondering how much in material this cost, it was about $7,000 for all the duct work in the units. And it cost about $3,000 to have the labor done. And that's including installing the duct work in the furnaces and everything. So I have just about 10 grand in that system. And I'm gonna assume that's probably a little lower than average. I know that's not a name brand system, Air Temp, but it's a good contractor's brand. And it also has a 10 year warranty on it if I get it registered within so many days. So I'm definitely gonna do that. And I think that's just on the compressor. I'd have to look at the details again. So I've had this system now since fall and I'm sure you're wondering how much has it cost me monthly to run it while the drywallers were in here working, while I was painting and everything else. Um, so my electric bill has been about $170 a month just for heating because that's the only thing I had going on. And you know, a little bit of juice from running drills and uh, the paint sprayer and stuff. But I just wanted to let you know that most of that was from the HVAC. So if you're looking at heating during the winter time, like I said, it's probably about 170 bucks using that exact system that I just showed you in a climate that's average. It's not super hot here, it's not super cold. Winters here last about four months to where it's really cold, but after that you have pretty mild falls and springs and then the summers, not bad at all. It's relatively hot, but it isn't super hot. So that's the climate I live in. And if you wanna check out a video on how to install PEX pipe, be sure to check out this video, it'll help you out.